Hi everyone. Um, right, uh, I thought I would do an update video um, because basically uh, this is the bit of the project where the captain comes over the airlines and says please put your seat belts on because um, we're approaching the airport. Um, so basically we're on that glide path now. So everything's been signed off. Everything to manufacture has been paid for. Uh, but I thought I'd give you a recap um, to see what we promised in the Kickstarter and what you're going to get now. Um, so, um, as you can see, this is the original V2 prototype, which is I uh, uh, in the Kickstarter. You'll see this exact monitor um, and everything was in it. So I'm not going to go through everything, but basically, as you can see, the design hasn't really changed that much. It's still basically the same. Um, there's been a lot of changes, but nothing obvious. Uh, but the key thing is the boards. So when you signed up, if you go back through and have a look at the pictures, you'll see. This was the scaler, which we was going to use. Uh, as you can see on the left-hand side, it's GBS 8200. On the right-hand side, a couple of custom boards, um, which Appy put together based on some work done by um, Byron. Sorry, Byron. Um, but uh, obviously, Appy ex extended it, um, as you can see. So that was the work. And you can see there's quite a lot of wires, which was connecting. That was just the way it was going to have to be. And then if you look inside the monitor you can see inside the controller and um, with a breakout board for all the extra connectors um, so that was basically what you what you backed on the Kickstarter um, so yeah uh, so as you can see that's basically what was the product and of course we would have improved it obviously um, we were going to neaten up the cabling and so on, but there would still be cables connecting the top board to the bottom board, etc. So, as you're probably aware, um, we went because of the the amount of backers that we did have. We we shot past the the target. We went past the. Um, the, all the we reached all the stretch goals, and what that basically meant was it gave me a big budget to do work with. Um, and I spent a lot of money. So basically, the profit that we was going to make on this, we're still going to make a little bit of profit, obviously, um, but a lot of the profit was spent on making the product even better for everyone, including yourselves and the next lot of people that come along and buy them later on. So how do we get there? The big thing was the cables, okay? The cables were a bit of a problem. So uh, I, I kind of had this in my mind, but I never thought we could do this. But of course, with Appy, as him and I were getting to know each other quite well, um, uh, he, he, suggest, he suggested, why don't we do this? And I went, yes, because I, you know, even in the Kickstarter, actually, we mentioned it as a potential extra to buy later. But actually, it become fundamentally important. Now, this is a very early prototype. Let's see if you can see that. This is a very early prototype. Single line of bar. I'm not going to go into massive details about what's on it, but basically, all the video, all the RGB, all the RGB, all the audio. Uh, it's even got I2C bus. Not on this one, hasn't? This is an old one, but this was the concept to test it. So what we then went, okay, fine. So. So this is the scaler. You can see it now actually sits on top of a board with slots at the bottom. And they plug into the back plane. And as you can see, we've been experimenting with this. There's still lots of cables. Um, and that wasn't that wasn't perfect. So anyway, uh, Appy went away and said, can I have a go designing my own GBS 8200? So we did. And that was it. Tiny little thing. Got rid of all the extraneous rubbish we didn't need. Uh, and basically now what would go there is again is the node. Uh, the the um, microcontroller. Uh, but that's basically Appy's version of the GBSA 200. And that made a big difference. Um, because obviously we put it on a nice 4 lab board. And you know we kind of cleaned up a lot of noise. Um, but there you go. So that, that was the first prototype. And there's only one of them. <laughs> and that's it. You can't have it. 
Uh, once that was done, then and I'm t this went through about two or three iterations. So we lost some money and time has gone into this. Uh, we ended up with this board, as you've probably seen. This is still an old prototype. Um, you know, this is like three or four generations old. But as you can see, it's starting to take shape now. So instead of having a GBS A200, we've taken Appy's little design that worked great. It was only meant for a test. Put it onto this board, and there you go. You've now got a self-contained proper board with everything you need. Uh, and for example, it uses this little OLED to, to do the control, so you get a little screen control screen, which is so. This is absolutely brilliant. The um, uh, the next thing, this one's quite messy. <laughs> the next thing is the controller. So we, I, I picked a controller right in the early days. Uh, I went through a lot of companies to find a controller that would suit, would give me good as good a quality as I could possibly get for composite and so on. And so we found this company that made these little controllers. They're basically TV controllers, but they're pretty pretty good and they do really good um, processing. And then we tied it all up. As you can see, we're starting to experiment here. We've got the HDMI switcher, which is a separate board. And uh, that's a driver, so don't worry about that. Uh, and this little board here was the HDMI out, which is a separate device, okay. Uh, so you can see it's starting to, it's busy, very busy. Um, um, but then, basically, he says trying to find it. We then went to this, um, uh, which has still got the controller on it. This is the video controller on it, but you can see now it breaks out, it all mounts it so it can plug in so we can pick all the signals up. Now, this was getting really good, but it still relied. It was quite expensive to obviously make. There's lots of different parts. Um, and so that kind of got knocked on the head. Now, you've all, I haven't got one of them in front of me, funny enough, um, boards. Um, but you've all seen the final one. I'm going to open this monitor up and show you what you got. So basically, that was what, that was the journey we took. As you can see around me, these monitors, this 17 inch, 19 inch, um, one of the reasons for the delay, as you're probably aware, was because we had to have a new tool made. The 19-inch had to have a completely new tool name, the big, massive metal tools, because uh, it was pushing slightly on the panel and it was causing glow. So um, that's one of the reasons for us, like a four to six week delay. I mean, this we're going to be a year late. Let's be realistic about this. But what you're getting is vastly, vastly superior. So now this is pretty much the final one let's make sure it's disconnected uh you can see swivel base up and down oled controller on there um I come back something new <laughs> um and you can see tidied up the speakers they're actually four i've been i've been promoting these as three inch speakers they're four inch speakers all this time i've been saying three inch and they're actually four anyway beside the point now you can see on the back, these are, apart from the fact of that top one, the colours of it off. Ignore that, please. Um, these are the correct colours. And you can see now, these are the final frames. Everything's been done now. You can see in here is a Pi, pi, four, pi 3, 4 and 5 frames. Um, and now let me just start taking these apart. Let me clear some space. Because <laughs> what I want you to see is... What the extra, the extra sales of money is not is not just going to go into my Aston Martin fund. I don't want an Aston Martin to be fair. I do my bike, but I haven't said that. I like the bikes I got, so I'm quite happy with that. But you can see the little handles. You pull the handle. One cable now, because the um, S video board has HS. H this is what that board looks like now. That's with that's the scaler, and on top, what you can see there is the S video board, and the S video also has RF input. Uh, so if you've ordered the S video pod, this is basically what you're going to get. Um, you're going to get RF input, and there's a component output, and there's the S video uh, input, and uh, sorry, they they're all inputs. What am I saying? Sorry. Uh, and down here, you've obviously got RGBI, which is CGA and EGA compliant, Commodore 128, and your SCART, which is pretty damn good. 
uh, so it handles most most scarts. Um, and because we've got a, cl a clock chip on the board, it's quite flexible on what the signals it can take. And now it's not going to do all. And if you look on the chart from the Kickstarter, you can see what we've tested it with. Uh, we've um, now actually you can add to that the Archimedes because um, the Archimedes seems to work nicely on it, uh, which is good news. It's also got obviously this built in, which is the node controller. Uh, now it's been set up to pretty much go bang and work. However, you may with different systems have to do some slight adjustments. You do that on a web page, you log into this chip here, just do some adjustments to make whichever device you want to look how you want it to look. Um, and then you get a great, you know, exactly how you want it, whether you want to add the effects on it, uh, all that kind of stuff, which would be a separate, a separate video. Um, but my, a lot of you should know that already, but it, it all comes with a web interface, which is absolutely brilliant. Uh, so that's that, and it all communicates through that little OLED in the front. Um, the next thing is, so here's a pie mount frame. This is actually the final one, metal frame. It's not very complex, it's, so what it will come with, it will come with the frame, this little adapter board, power adapter board, put a lot of work in this to make it work with the Pi 5, to make sure it's absolutely perfectly clean, nice, nice, nice 5 volt for it. Um, and um, so it's got two inputs, you your power output with the lead, that will supply the lead, comes around, plugs in, um, which is absolutely, now uh, officially it would be Pi 4 and 5, um, if you've got a Pi 3 and want to put it into it, will fit, but you'll probably have to get yourself a different cable because this is a diff they change. It's I think it's a different cable on that. Uh, just bear that in mind. Uh, and same thing with the HDMI, you'd need a different HDMI cable. So the kit has been made for four Pi 4 and four, Pi 5, um, and I won't be changing that enough because it's just too too much. Um, and most people will put a Pi 4 or Pi 5 in it. Um, so that you can see that one's done. And then we come down to the slot zero. Now, um, if you can see, let me just pull these cables out. There's one cable that goes into the internal switcher. Let me pull that one out. Make it a bit tidier. Now you can see this power cable for the Pi. You might be able to see it goes in the back. I'm gonna turn it around that way. Like that cable there, the USB cable, that's power in the Pi. Okay, but you can now see, hopefully, the inside. And what you've got now is the slot zero at the bottom and that back plane, which the back plane is the most important bit because that saves having so many cables. There's very few cables that you need on this and it's transformed it from what was going to be uh, an enthusiast system, so who didn't mind connecting those cables, to pretty much plug and play. Matt, the only things you're really going to need to connect is probably, for example, on that board, everything's plug and play, except with the S-Video, we go out through the HDMI and you just connect that onto the internal HDMI. Um, and same thing with this, all you do is connect the power to power it, obviously, uh, because we can't make a bus plane for it. You don't, want to, you don't want to pay us the same price as the Pi to make you a bus plane, right? So you just a okay, power cable and the HDMI cable and then plug that and connect it, stick it in, screw it in. Um, let me just pop this out, so as you can see, with the slot zero, it's basically, well, it's light years ahead of what we promised in the Kickstarter. Now, the bottom one doesn't have handles. If you're wondering why not, you're not meant to take it out. Simple. Don't ever put this in a different slot. It's called slot zero for a reason. Okay, so there you go. There's the board. Oh, let's get a light off of it. <laughs> and you see that cable there goes up to the panel. Um, now, everything else, what's really nice about this, if I pull that out, there's the board, slot zero, and it's got the, the what we call the MES board on top, and that's got multiple HDMI. It's all built into the card now. It's all really heavily customized hardware this is now. This is not thrown together. What we're trying to do is, we, I've always said, is we're trying to make a monitor for 90% of people, okay? Um, and this version, I think, will do it. But it's a very heavily customized system. Um, and uh, the quality is outstanding. Now, I just hope, I, I be, I'll be shocked uh, if people are not happy with the quality because 
the, the effort we've gone to is insane. And as you can see, there's the back plane. Let me get it right. And then you can see at the bottom, see all the connect, all the cables just plug into the bottom of it and go off where they got to go. Go like the speakers and power and driving the um, uh, panel, etc., etc. And then you end up with a monitor. Um, and of course, it comes in black, which you can't see. Um, but um, yeah, so a lot of work has been done. It is vastly superior to what you backed. Um, um, however, this is the start of a journey. And do not think for one minute that we're not experimenting in the background for in a year or two's time upgrades to this. Now, it's very important to understand the whole point of this. It's upgradable. You can get on the, you can buy it and you'll be able to later on upgrade it, slap new boards into it. Well, you're there, I might as well show you this. Right, so one of the boards, not sure exactly how it's gonna come, how, how it's gonna be made, um, is this, it's Pandora. As you can see, it's Pandora board. This is sitting on top of a holder um, and it's got multiple different types. We've got different joy ports. So as you can see, if you can see that little board plugs in and that's nine pin connectors for joypot if you've already got um, joysticks that are nine pin like genesis ones atari ones whatever they'll plug into there and the software will just work we also have this one which is for neo geo controllers okay now uh at the moment um this board is a board that mounts on top of our card um but once we've shipped and got things moving, we're looking into doing a custom Pandora, which if we can, I've already got it costed uh, to make a custom Pandora board. Now, if you don't know what Pandora board is, go online, have a look, sort Pandora Saga or Pandora 3D or Pandora DX. Just do searches for them. And basically, it's uh, what they put... A lot of these go into arcade cabinets, um, and uh, but we're going to probably make a single board, which will reduce the cost because this this will be quite expensive with the with the card underneath the card on top, and then they're very hard to get the cards. They're all different, so we make up we make us to make our own. It will be one of those things where um, uh, the software. If we put any software, you'll have to put your own software on it, okay? Uh, for obvious reasons. Hopefully, you understand that. This is the Mister, as you can see, full stack. Okay, got a little adapter board, power adapter board connected on a splitter, and then you just take the HDMI out uh, and you run it into the monitor, and you've got a Mister with all the benefit there. Um, on the back, you can see it's the ports plug in and so on. You do have audio, uh, analog, audio, and VGA output. Um, well, it's not VGA, but it's 15 ping, you know, output, and it's also an Ethernet. The only problem, because physically, uh, if you want the analog in it, um, you can't have uh, you can't have the network cable. But most people just put one of these in. Um, yeah. Uh, also, you're kind of limited with the <laughs> with uh, the connectors. There's a lot of connectors internally, and uh, if you want to turn this into a gaming rig. You can remove the OLED and it'll come with, it's going to be, a, we've got these little um, panels that you can put two USB connectors in it. So you could do that if you want to. Um, so that's that. And then of course for you Amiga fans, this is our iMiga 3K. As you can see there, this is, a, this is an Amiga <laughs> built in MIDI. <laughs> this is, this, well I wouldn't say, this is pretty much production product, but we don't know where... There's some things we want to add to it before we ship, uh, but you'll notice it's got a Pi, uh, Pi three on it, which basically supercharges this. Um, if you know anything about Pi Storm, go and have a look. If you're not an Amiga fan, you're not interested. Fair enough. Um, but this is uh, another board that plugs straight into the back plane. All of this is because we have the back plane, which is crucial to this whole project. Um, so there you go. Uh, um, Hope that's all clear and um, speak to you soon.